Thank you again for invitation to speak about bone metastasis, role of zoledronic acid, denosumab, and other strategies. My disclosure. So metastatic bone disease in the lung cancer at the time of diagnosis is quite frequent. 30 to 40% of patients will have bone metastases, and they can have debilitating consequences called skeletal related events or SREs, and they represent fracture, radiation or surgery to bone, spinal cord compression, and hypercalcemia. These have consequences such as loss of autonomy, significant morbidity, reduced quality of life, bone pain, and also increased healthcare costs and resources. But the ultimate consequence is decreased survival. Um, in a study of lung cancer and other, other solid tumors of zoledronic acid versus placebo, 46% of patients developed SREs. And mean number of SREs per patient per year in this trial was 2.71. And we know that patients now live longer, and even the wild-type tumors, uh, uh, now uh, survival is uh, around a year. And median time to first SRE is only 5.2 months. And we also know that patients who develop SREs versus the ones without SREs live 50% sh uh, shorter time uh, if they have SREs. So the history started with bisphosphonates, and the nitrogen-containing bisphosphonates uh, block farnesyl diphosphate synthase, and by that, they block the prenylation of small signaling proteins required for cell function and survival. So we have the trial of zoledronic acid in patients with bone metastases from non-small cell lung cancer and other solid tumors. Zoledronic acid, four milligrams intravenously over 15 minutes every three weeks. And uh, this was compared to placebo. We started with eight milligrams of zoledronic acid, but because of concern for renal safety, we um, finished this arm. And stratification was based on a non-small cell lung cancer versus other solid tumors, final analysis at 21 months. You can see that non-small cell lung cancer represented 49% of patients, 244, but there were other tumors such as small cell lung cancer, renal, colon, unknown primary blood, and so on. So, Zoledronic acid reduced percentage of patients with each SRE, and you can see their p-value less than 0.05. And zoledronic acid reduced the risk of developing an SRE in the whole group by 31%, and in non-small cell lung cancer group by 32%. Significant p-value 0.016. Zoledronic acid um, significantly reduced the risk of SREs in patients with a history of SREs, and you can see that the risk reduction if patients had SRE was higher, 31%, than patients who did not have SRE, 23%. There was no significant difference in survival in the overall population. We have now biochemical markers of bone formation, which represent the osteoblastic activity, and uh, most frequent is serum bone-specific alkaline phosphatase, and for resorption, represented by osteoclastic activity, entelopeptide of type 1 collagen, or NTX, in urine and serum, and cetelopeptide of type 1 collagen, CTX. And Elevated levels of NTX are associated with an increased risk of negative clinical outcomes such as SREs, disease progression, and death. You can see all significant p-values. 
And in the trial of zoledronic acid versus placebo, zoledronic acid normalized NTX levels within three months in 81% of the patients. And normalization of the NTX levels with zoledronic acid improved survival. And you can see in blue there um, that uh, the risk reduction of death was 57% in patients who normalized. Now, denosumab, a rank ligand inhibitor, receptor activator nucleotide kappa B, rank, uh, is essential for osteoclast formation, function, and survival, fu fully human monoclonal antibody to rank ligand, IgG2 immunoglobulin isotype, and it's administered via subcutaneous in injection. And you can see here uh, the vicious cycle and uh, denosumab interrupts it by uh, targeting and binding to rank ligand and preventing activation of the receptor rank on osteoclasts. So we have randomized double-blind study of denosumab versus zoledronic acid in the treatment of bone metastases in patients with advanced cancer, but excluding breast and prostate cancer, including multiple myeloma. And you can see 886 patients received denosumab, 120 milligrams subcutaneously and placebo uh, IV every four weeks, compared to 890 patients on zoledronic acid, four milligrams intravenously, and subcutaneous placebo. Primary endpoint was time to first on study SRE for non-inferiority, and secondary endpoints time to first on study SRE for superiority, and time to first and subsequent on study SRE for superiority. So non-small cell lung cancer, 345 patients on zoledronic acid, 343 on denosumab. You can see uh, that time to, from first bone metastasis to randomization in both arms about two months. Uh, previous SREs in 50% of patients in both arms, and presence of visceral metastasis about 50% of patients in both arms. So time to first on study SRE reached the non-inferiority. Um, there is a 20 point six ma median months for denosumab and 16.3 for zoledronic acid with p-value 0.06, but non-inferiority was reached. And by multiple event analysis, uh, superiority was not reached in the whole study. If you look then at solid tumors only, and you, ten, you take away the 10% of patients with multiple myeloma, so you look at solid tumors only, you see denosumab 21.4 months, time to first on study SRE, compared to zoledronic acid 15.4 months, there is a significant p-value of 0.017, as a ratio 0.81. And when you look at solid tumors only, again, time to first and subsequent SREs, you can see superiority of denosumab compared to zoledronic acid with p-value of 0.04. Now, the adverse events of interest, it's mainly acute phase reaction during the administration and during the first three days. And you can see zoledronic acid is higher than denosumab. And potential renal toxicity, it's really with zoledronic acid and not with denosumab because denosumab is not excreted by kidneys. When you give zoledronic acid, you have to adjust the dose for creatinine, but you don't have to do it for denosumab. The toxicity you have there is related to chemotherapy. And uh, cumulative rates of osteonecrosis of jaw, O and J, is around 1% in both. Overall disease progression, you can see overlapping curves, and overall survival also overlapping curves. When we look at pain and analgesic use in this study, 
Uh, you can see that patients who had no low analgesics at the beginning, 63% uh, on denosumab, 62% on zoledronic acid, and patients with strong analgesics, it's well balanced. So denosumab delayed time to moderate severe pain in patients with no mild pain at baseline. You can see 4.7 median months compared to 3.7 on zoledronic acid, risk reduction 19%, significant p-value, and proportion with no mild pain at baseline of patients reporting moderate severe pain by visit is also uh, higher on zoledronic acid. Uh, more patients uh, develop more severe pain, and average relative difference from months one to months 11 is about 10%, favoring denosumab. And uh, time to clinically meaningful pain worsening, denosumab 5.6 months median, and zoledronic acid 4.6 months. Clinically meaningful pain improvement, no difference. But when you look who shifted to strong opioid use, more analgesic consumption, you can see that it is zoledronic acid, average relative difference, 22%. <clears throat> so when we look at pain, we look at cough, dyspnea, pain, um, fatigue, and other um, problems. We have to always look, when we look at pain, what happened with the analgesic consumption. And when I read the reports, I see no improvement of pain, but no analgesic consumption. That's not a good report. And when we look at the same trial again, and we are interested now in overall survival, look, adenocarcinoma is a majority of the patients, 21% squamous cancer, uh, and uh, on zoledronic acid, and then a small number of uh, patients with small cell lung cancer. So when we look at overall survival of the whole group of patients with lung cancer, denosumab, median months, 8.9, zoledronic acid, 7.7, .7, and significant p-value. So there is an effect on overall survival in the whole group of patients. When we look at small cell lung cancer, but I pointed out that the numbers were small, it is denosumab, 7.6 months, versus zoledronic acid, 5.1 months, but not a significant p-value, small number of patients. When we look at only non-small cell lung cancer, 9.5 versus 8.1 months, uh, again, p-value is uh, significant, 0 0.01 favoring denosumab. When we look at histological types, you can see a significant p-value for squamous cancer, adenocarcinoma, there is a p-value of 0 0.07, just a trend of superiority. Now, uh, interestingly, patients who had visceral brain metastases, the median survival 7.7 .7 to 6.4 with significant p-value, this finding uh, led to a, a randomized trial of chemotherapy plus minus denosumab with primary endpoint of overall survival. So to summarize, results from a phase three randomized trial in patients with solid tumors only, excluding the breast and prostate cancer and multiple myeloma, and bone metastasis showed denosumab was superior to zoledronic acid in delaying time to first on study SRE, delaying time to first and subsequent SREs, and the subgroup analysis demonstrated superior survival on denosumab versus zoledronic acid, and better pain control. So this study has closed now for approval and we are waiting for the results. Denosumab in combination with chemotherapy as first line treatment of metastatic non-small cell lung cancer. You can see here the schema. Uh, you use standard of care chemotherapy for four to six cycles and 144 patients randomized to receive denosumab uh, with chemotherapy 
and uh, 72 patients placebo with chemotherapy, and you can continue the nosumab uh, uh, maintenance if you wish. Um, So the key elements of the protocol stratification were presence or absence of bone metastases, which will be interesting to see if we can actually prevent the bone metastases by histology, squamous versus non-squamous tumor, and geographic regions. In patients with bone metastases, zoledronic acid was offered in a blinded manner upon request of the investigator. And it could be assigned at first dose or when bone metastases developed while on protocol. So primary ob uh, objective was to assess whether any benefit on overall survival from the nosumab uh, versus the sta and standard of care versus only standard of care is associated with rank expression and also secondary endpoint versus rankle expression and also objective response um, on rank and rankle expression. Uh, the exploratory objective was to investigate potential biomarkers by biochemical analysis of blood, urine, and or t tumor tissue and genetic analysis of tumor samples and correlate uh, these with treatment outcomes. So denosumab uh, may indirectly affect skeletal tumor progression by targeting osteoclasts and disrupting the interaction between tumor cells and the bone microenvironment. And it can also improve survival by directly inhibiting rankle or rank expressing tumor cells. Rankle inhibition may have a direct antineoplastic effect on lung cancer cells via apoptosis or anti-migration activity. Um, there are some new agents which seem to have bone targeting activity, and I list them here, dasatinib, RAT223, which is an alpha emitter, ACE011, acabozantinib. So we have to see in future what the trials will show us. Thank you for your attention.